What's going on guys, it's James back with another MX-5 update and as I sort of touched on in last episode, my exhaust manifold needs wrapping. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. I've got 30 foot of this stuff, so let's get into it. So exhaust wrap, it's actually quite controversial stuff in the car scene. Some people love it, some people hate it. Uh, I don't think many people doubt its effectiveness. It does do what it says it does, but it's at what cost? Because you do hear a lot of claims that it accelerates corrosion of your exhaust pipe and rots it out. And maybe it does, but I need a low cost solution to the problem that I am currently faced with, and that lies with supercharging this engine and specifically where I intend to mount the supercharger which is directly over the top of the exhaust manifold. Now superchargers run hot anyway, it's science. Compressing air generates heat but having a supercharger mounted directly over a hot exhaust manifold only aggravates this problem and a scalding hot supercharger is no good for efficiency nor is it particularly good for the longevity of the supercharger itself and this is why I have turned to exhaust wrap and specifically I've got on with this DEI titanium exhaust trap and I've bought two 15 foot rolls of the stuff which I hope will be enough. So a quick budget recap while we're on the subject. These two rolls cost me £35.96 and then I also needed some stainless zip ties as well to secure it in place and they cost me a further £3.50. So the running total as of this episode is £1,045. Right, let's get this exhaust manifold out of this car because it's going to be a lot easier for me to wrap it when it's not in the engine bay. So let's get on with it. Okay, so the first thing I need to remove is this OEM heat shield here. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, James, why are you wrapping an exhaust pipe when it already has a heat shield on it? Well, the answer is pretty simple because I can't use this heat shield with the supercharger because I've got to remove it to make way for one of the brackets. So it's got to come out. I would use it if I could, but I can't. So to get it out, there are five 10 millimeter bolts, uh, two on the top, three down the sides and to the back here. I'll whack those out and then get this heat shield out of here. Damn it. If you can help it, it really helps not to drop bolts in the engine bay. And that one didn't hit the floor, so who knows where it's gone. Oh, there she is. Okay, with that heat shield removed, we now have really good access to this exhaust manifold. So this is held in place by nine 14 millimeter nuts here. These hold the manifold to the cylinder head. Then we've got the EGR circuit to disconnect. There's a 22 millimeter nut slash flange thing to remove. And then finally down here, we've got another three 14 millimeter nuts to separate this manifold from the mid pipe. And I actually need to go underneath the car to get to them. So I've jacked it up, I've supported it on some axle stands, but before I go under there, I'm gonna give all these exhaust studs a good soaking in some penetrating fluid and let that soak in while I move to working underneath this car. Okay, I've got those three nuts out down there. So now this manifold is separated from the mid pipe and you are gonna need one of these UJ adapters for your socket here to get those out. You're not gonna do it any other way. So now I've got those out. The next thing I'm gonna focus on are the exhaust nuts. Now these things are notorious for being a pain in the backside, no matter what the vehicle. The heat cycles they have to go through really do get them nice and crispy, which is why I give them a good soaking in some penetrating fluid. So I'm gonna go at them nice and easy. Uh, sometimes the nut will spin off the stud, sometimes the stud will spin out of the head. It really doesn't matter as long as they don't break because if the stud breaks, you're gonna be in a world of pain. And actually, I remember the first engine I built for the Capri, in fact, it was the first engine I ever built. I took my time with it. I was super precious with it. Uh, did everything to the best of my ability. I dropped it in the engine bay. Everything was going really well. And then the last, literally the last nut I tightened up was an exhaust stud nut. And I was just tightening it up and it broke off. 
flush with the cylinder head. I wasn't going crazy anything, it must have been a defect in the stud but it broke off. I tried easy outs, I tried drilling it out, I made a proper mess of it and in the end I had to remove the cylinder head from my freshly built engine, take it down to the machine shop and have them sort out the problem. So that has mentally scarred me. Every time I look at an exhaust stud now, I always have that experience in the back of my mind. And these things scare me, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm gonna go at them nice and easy and hopefully we do not break a stud. All right, I can breathe a sigh of relief because all those nine manifold nuts are loose. But before I remove them completely, I need to disconnect this EGR circuit. So I've got my 22 mil spanner here. Access is a bit tight down there, but hopefully I'll get in there, break that loose. Then I can continue removing all these nine manifold nuts and then this manifold should be out of this engine bay. Right, we've got our nine exhaust stud nuts removed, the EGR circuit is disconnected, and the manifold is disconnected from the mid pipe. So now, we should be able to lift this out of the engine bay. Oh, dipstick tube. Right, I'm not gonna bend the dipstick tube. I can actually see right down there, there's one 10 millimeter nut holding this dipstick tube in place. I'm actually gonna have to go underneath the car to get it and I'm gonna use two long extensions with the UJ on the end and a 10 millimeter socket on the end of that to get to it. But I'm hoping once I've backed that out, I'll be able to pull this dipstick back and that'll let me remove this exhaust manifold without having to bend it. Right, I haven't completely removed that nut, I've just backed it off. I thought if I take it off, it's gonna be incredibly difficult to get back on. So I've backed it off and now we've got some wiggle room in the dipstick, so I'm hoping that's gonna give us enough clearance to get this out. Or maybe not. Or maybe it is. Okay, she's out. Now you might be wondering about gaskets. Well, I'm actually gonna try and reuse these gaskets because they're these like special double skin gaskets, which sometimes you can get away with reusing them. So I'm gonna chance it because obviously it keeps the cost down. So I'll chance it and now I need to get this manifold cleaned up and prepped ready for some exhaust wrap. Right, okay, that's one manifold removed from the car, and I'm actually quite impressed by this piece, actually, for what is essentially an OEM part. I don't reckon you do much better in the aftermarket, so I've got no intention of swapping this thing out, but before I wrap it, I have got a little bit of prep work to do, and first up, I need to remove all these little brackets, which were for the OEM heat shield, which we're not gonna be using anymore, and then there's these two pipe braces as well which I also need to remove because with those in place it's going to be very difficult for me to get a good looking tight wrap around this manifold so I'm going to fire up the angle grinder and whip these things off. Right, this manifold is looking way better now that I've removed those little brackets and stuff and as a couple of final extra steps I gave the whole thing a once over with the wire brush in the grinder and then gave everything a spray down with some brake clean as well and that's just to make sure I've removed all dirt and grease from it. So now I can begin the wrapping process. Now there's plenty of tutorials online showing you how to do this so I'm going to keep this fairly brief. I'm using titanium exhaust wrap which does not need wetting prior to installation. If you were using fiberglass wrap you'd want to soak the roll in some water for 10 minutes or so before applying it but this is titanium so I can wrap it dry. 
So basically I started by wrapping these two manifold pipes here and then I secured that wrap in place with some plastic zip ties just as a temporary measure and then I worked from the bottom of the manifold upwards covering as much pipe work as I possibly could. Now it does get tricky when you get to these Y pieces where the pipe work splits into two to keep the wrap tight but I stuck at it, uh, I took my time and achieved what I think is a pretty decent wrap and I did need all 30 foot of this stuff by the way as well. 15 foot would have been nowhere near enough. So then when I was happy with the wrap I secured it in place with some of these stainless steel zip ties which I've got to be honest I'm not all that impressed with. I didn't think they grabbed the wrap tight enough but I did discover a handy little technique to make them nip up just that little bit tighter and if you want to see how to do that click the link at the top of the screen right now to take you to that tech tip video. Okay at this point we're all wrapped up and this manifold is ready to go back into the engine bay. Right, I'm going to be reusing these exhaust gaskets because they're in pretty good shape and I'm quite confident that they'll seal up okay. Uh, famous last words, but hopefully I'm going to be right about that. So once the gaskets are in place, I can go about fitting the exhaust manifold. So basically I need to locate it on the studs in the cylinder head and the studs on the mid pipe. And then it's just a simple case of tightening everything down. So there's nine manifold studs to tighten up. There's the 22 millimeter nut to secure the EGR circuit. And then there's three 40 millimeter nuts to secure the manifold to the mid pipe and also there's that little 10 millimeter nut that holds the dipstick in place I need to tighten that up as well and there you have it that's one exhaust manifold nicely wrapped and reinstalled back into the engine bay and hopefully this stuff will keep some of that exhaust heat away from the supercharger now I'm not naive enough to think it's going to keep it all away but if it can reduce engine bay temperatures just a little bit I think this mod will have been well worth it so that's just another step in the direction for supercharging this car and I know that I'm on episode what is it 16 now and still no supercharger but Bear with me because I am trying to be as thorough as possible with this series and show you guys what it really takes to supercharge your car because you can almost guarantee it's never quite as simple as some people will tell you nor is it as cheap. Now I did backtrack I think to episode 3 of this series where I claimed I could do it for 1750 it's going to be tight. I, I've got some parts to sell so I hopefully should get some money back my direction but still I think that is going to be tight. But I'm soldiering on with this build. If you enjoy it and you want to stay up to date with it, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you for the next episode.